some some decision making uh, methods uh, brainstorm we all know what that is right it, it's it's where you sit there and you just uh, basically um, come up with this large number of ideas it's, you want to be freewheeling you want to you don't criticize you encourage everyone to say something get all the ideas and then you just kind of let it fester and incubate and then you um, later on you, you start attacking again about four five perhaps like five nine ten people not a big group, just a small group. You don't want group think, but yet you want enough for new ideas. Consensus. Consensus is where you reach an agreement. Not everybody's first choice, but it's one they can live with, okay? Uh, nominal group technique. What happens is, uh, this actually came from Wisconsin, and uh, bring people together, so, but it, there was initial interaction amongst them, right? So, so what you do is, uh, you don't want the social pressures, right? So you let everybody basically come up with their own ideas, again, five to nine people, and the problem is presented. But before the, uh, any discussion, they all create their own little ideas of what, what they think should happen, and then you finally bring it back together and you work it out. Voting, this is one person, one vote. Uh, probably not the preferred method um, because it's kind of like a win-lose. Uh, another way to do it is multi-voting. Uh, we have chili cook-off. And what we do then is uh, people vote for their own chili. So what we do is you have to vote for their three best chilies. And so each time you get a vote, so everybody, every vote is three. So what will happen then is they, they're forced to vote for two others. And then um, you get a winner from that. Okay, it's much more effective. We're going to talk about effect, impact, and force field analysis in the next couple slides. So when you're picking on a, a project or, or something to do, what you want to do is you want to put a little effort in and a high impact. So if you look at this uh, chart here, you can see that quick win. This is a little hanging fruit. Just go out there and get those. They don't take much effort, but they have a big impact. Um, then as you go along, um, you want uh, where you have great impact, right? Or let's go the other way, the low impact, low effort, those are fill-ins, right? You just basically do it when you have time. And then if you got low impact but high effort, these are things you'll never get appreciated for. Uh, try to avoid them. And finally, if you have great impact and great effort, that's a major project. Um, this is something, um, this is what Six Sigma is about, right? You're going to spend a lot of resources, but it should make a big impact. I've seen Six Sigma projects take six, seven, months to do a lot of study and stuff and when it's all done it saves the company two three hundred bucks yeah don't don't pick those you want to make sure you get your bang for your buck this is an uh, example of uh, Eddington's uh, uh, force field analysis basically this one here says do we upgrade the factory with new manufacturing machinery and if you look at it on the left they got all the things that are, are favoring on the right, the red parts are all the things against it, right? And then you weigh each one of these things. So, for example, um, improved speed of uh, production. I'm looking at the blue one now. That gets a 2. That gets a weight of 2. If you look on the red side, uh, cost is a 3. So what you do then is you look at there. You add up all the numbers, 4, th 2, 3, 1. You get a 10. And if you add up the other side, 3, 3, 1, 3, 1, that comes up to 11. In this case, the forces against change are greater than the forces for change. We don't upgrade the factory. There, there are several problem solving tools. Uh, there's a PDCA or PDSA, a Plan, Do, Check, Act, uh, often called the uh, Deming Cycle, but it's actually developed by Walter Schuert. And what you do is you plan an activity, you do it, you check, make sure you got the results, and then you take action to fix it. Or another way of putting it is study. Um, I like study better, uh, figure out why, and, and get a better depth of what happened. Uh, there's some eight problem solving steps, not going to go into this much. This is like the 8D, uh, just classic problem solving steps, the six steps. Um, it's all over the internet. Just do a search if you want to look at some. Of course, you've got the Six Sigma method to define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Uh, and better than that, then you've got the Ishikawa. You've got the uh, uh, tools we're going to be talking about here. Another one I'd like to talk about is the investigate, design, execute, and adjust cycle, the idea process. Um, 
So, so what you do, and you can do this with a new design, uh, both product, service, or process, anything you can do it, right? So what you do is you investigate, uh, um, uh, you define the problem, get some facts about it, and see if you got any uh, root causes. So you design, uh, you basically envision the idealized favorite state of, of how you can achieve the ideal. You execute, you put it into, um, um, into action here. And you establish you know your metrics. You're looking at it. You start testing for the best solution, and how much of an impact. And then you adjust, right? It's never done. You 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 make improvements on the old and old process. It keeps on going. You know, as a black belt, one of the things you have to do is train some people, um, especially on the tools. This this is probably new to most people, and it's not the way most people think. Uh, so how do you decide? Well, first thing you do is surveillance. Uh, what do you need? I mean, what is what is what does it look like we need? And then you investigate that. And you say, well, okay, uh, how can the performance gap between what we know, what we need to know through the surveillance, how can we get there, right? So the analysis, and you gather information and for validity, right? And you want to know what the systems, goals, incentives. Uh, ability, skills, and knowledge, what they have, when, and and then you look at the resources for training, what do we have, right? Do we have our own classroom? You know, some companies uh, very much like to get it off-site when they, when they do the training. Others, they like to have it in their own, in their own uh, classroom. What resources do you have, right? Curriculum development, you you want to know where you're going with this thing, right? So so there's a uh, there's a process for it, right? You, you can contract learning, you can do actual learning, self teaching, theory session, skill session, lectures, and uh, how you going to you know what I like to do, and you're all part of the victim of it. Very short PowerPoint. They find that uh, it's called the flip technique. The average person has to see material about five six times before they get it. Okay. PowerPoints is not a good way to do that. Imagine if you had to watch the same PowerPoint five or six times, and it's about ten times longer. No, no. So, so what, what, another way to do that is to inflict them with a flip classroom. And that's where you give the quiz and say, all right, you find the answers. And as they're looking for the answer for the specific questions, they look at the rest of the material within there. And by using a, a multiple choice, you can kind of direct them to what you want them to learn. Uh, technology. I never, up until a few years ago, I didn't think it was possible to, to uh, teach STEM classes online. But with a uh, video online, you guys have seen the YouTube videos, I'm sure. Uh, I think you can get that. You need the interaction with the instructor. So delivery, well, yeah, you got it online. And actually, uh, I've got people that say they'd rather do it online than, than in person, right? I'm just going to talk a bit here um, about adult learning. Um, adults uh, actually enjoy teaching adults more uh, because they have more life experience. They can come up with some examples. They're, they're generally more motivated to learn, right? They don't have to get a grade to get through school, get the diploma. They're here to learn. They, they, they have more responsibilities so they can fit in the big picture. You know, they tend to be, after they get out of school, they, they forget how to learn, but oh, that's okay. And they got a lot of variants. You know, we all come from different backgrounds. Just look in the classroom here. Uh, how many different um, uh, jobs there are in different countries, different everything, right? So, so what they do then is, is I'm going to assume you're ready to learn. Well, this has been studied for quite a bit, right? And uh, what, what they said is a guy named Getz came along and he said, well, what's the best way to learn? He said, well, about 80% of the information is by sight. 11% is by hearing. Look what I'm doing now. You're just listening to me, right? And 9% by other senses, right? So traditionally, if I were to do an online class, I'd just give you a bunch of reading. You'd only retain about 10% of that, right? However, if you can see in here, you retain about 50%. That's why I see so many videos. And I haven't figured this out yet, but if I could get to, to this... Um, get you to see it and to speak it at the same time, to read it back to me in your own words, then you get up to 70%. And if you could actually do the thing, whatever we're doing, then you're up to 90%, right? Um, 
if you haven't any ideas there, I'm, I'm open to it, okay? I'm open to it. Uh, but let's leave it there for now. Long chapter or long unit. Uh, a lot of discussion, okay? Thanks.